Hello and welcome to Rogue Tutorials where I make videos showing you how you can do some retro online gaming using emulators. My name is Clutch450 and in this video I am going to show you how you can set up the third party Kodi add-on called IAGL, otherwise known as the Internet Archive Game Launcher. What this add-on does is it searches archive.org for the game you would like to play and then launches it right into RetroArch, making it for a very easy to use uh, experience. Um, however, it does take a little bit of setup to get just right, to have everything working perfectly. And that is the intent of my video right now. I'm going to try to help you get set up as quickly as possible. Um, but don't just take my word for it. If you go to this GitHub page, which I'll have the link in the description, there is a lot of good information here in both the wiki here, uh, telling you uh, installation setup add-ons. The FAQ has a lot of good um, things in here. So a lot of work went into creating all this. So if you are having issues um, or if you are installing this for the first time, I highly recommend that you read through all of this first and then try to follow my guide. This way you um, at least have a little bit of an understanding what it is you're supposed to be doing. So First things first, we are going to not start here, but we are going to start with RetroArch. So go and do a quick Google search for RetroArch. And first link here for RetroArch.com, click that, click on download. It should automatically detect what version of Windows you're using, so you can go ahead and download the latest stable release. Or if you want, you can go down and find your uh, version through here. Uh, to make it quick and easy, just go ahead and click the Download Stable button. All right, now that RetroArch has downloaded, you can go ahead and open up your download folder and double click on RetroArch win64setup.exe. Uh, first thing that's going to pop up is just Microsoft telling you that this is not a Microsoft verified app, meaning you didn't get it from the App Store. That's okay. Click install anyway. The next thing that's going to pop up that you are not going to see on the screen is another little warning just saying that you are installing something from an unknown publisher. Go ahead and click yes to that. Now you have your installation wizard. Go ahead and click next. Read through the license agreement if you wish, click I agree, and then install RetroArch wherever you want. Uh, the C drive and this default folder works great. I, however, am going to change it to my D drive. That is personal to me. You do not need to do that. You can leave it at C. Hit next, and then click to install the DirectX 9 runtime. 99% of you are not going to need it, but let's just do that anyway. Click install, and now RetroArch is going to install. Once RetroArch is done installing, the DirectX installation will pop up. Go ahead, click I accept, hit next. Be sure to uncheck install the Bing bar. This is not something that you need. Click next. And now it's going to check to see whether or not you need to install DirectX. As I said, 99% of you out there do not need to need to install this. However, RetroArch will not run if it is not installed. So this is just uh, just to make sure. And as I said, it is determined that no installation is necessary. Click Finish. And click Finish. So now that RetroArch is installed, we can go ahead and delete this installation program. And now let's browse to where we just installed it. As I said, I installed it into my D drive, RetroArch Win64, and scroll down until you see RetroArch.exe. Now, just for um, ease of uh, access, I would right-click and hold on RetroArch, drag it to your desktop, release the right-click, and click on Create Shortcut here. Now, whenever you want to launch RetroArch, you can just double click on this shortcut. So now let's do that. Let's double click on RetroArch. First thing you'll see is that it'll go into a windowed mode. If you do not want to play in a windowed mode, 
you can press the F key on your keyboard and it will go to full screen. Now, one other thing that you may want to change in the settings, if you're like me and have a multiple monitor setup and you want RetroArch to only appear on a certain monitor, you can go to settings, go to video, go to output, go to monitor index and press right. Right now it's on my other monitor. It says monitor index one. I hit right one more time. And now it says monitor index two and it's always gonna be on this monitor. Now you can hit backspace to go back, backspace to go back, backspace to go back, and then you're back here. So if you don't wanna be uh, controlling RetroArch using up, down, left, right, enter, and backspace, um, you might as well go ahead and connect the controller that you plan on using for your gaming. Uh, I personally re would recommend an Xbox One S controller with that has the Bluetooth capability on it. Um, it works perfect. Um, these Xbox controllers are like designed to work with Windows 10 and RetroArch has pretty much um, based its interface off of using an Xbox controller. Uh, but you should be able to use whatever you want. So if you look at the lower left hand corner of the screen, when I turn on my Xbox controller, you can see it says Xbox One controller configured in port one. So if whatever controller you want to use, you plugged it in, hopefully you got something on the bottom left that said your controller was recognized, like 8-bit do, your NES adapter, adaptoid, whatever it is that you have, hopefully it recognized it. If it didn't, don't worry, just for right now, browse with the up, down, left, right, and we'll see if we can fix that. So the next thing we need to install are cores. One of the hardest things for people to understand with RetroArch is that RetroArch itself is not an emulator. It just is a front end for these cores. And if you go to main menu, go to online updater and go to core downloader, these are your cores or quote unquote emulators. Now to make sure that RetroArch runs perfectly with um, IAGL in Kodi, we're just gonna go ahead and download every single core that RetroArch has to offer. Is it technically necessary? No, but it's easier for me to tell you to download every core in this list than it is to try and pick and choose what we need. So all you gotta do is hit enter on the core, it'll download and install it, and you'll get the hash mark uh, on your right. So go through each one, one by one, make sure that one core is done downloading and installing before you move on to the next. If at any time a core um, kind of freezes halfway or doesn't fully install and gets stuck, no worries. Just go ahead and uh, exit out of RetroArch and go back in and complete this process. So I'm going to continue to go through this one by one, as should you, and I will fast forward this to the end. Okay, so now that all of the cores are downloaded, you can hit the backspace key. And now with all the cores downloaded, if you ever wanna make sure that all your cores are up to date, you can just go ahead and hit the update installed cores and all your cores that are installed will update. If for instance, you think that there might be a, a new core that you don't have downloaded, just go back into core downloader and look through each core, any core that doesn't have that blue hash mark next to it, the pound sign, that means you don't have it installed. Go ahead, enter on it, and it'll be installed. Next things I want you to do is go down to the update core info files, and just like we did with the cores, go through one by one and update the core info files, assets, control profiles, cheats, databases, overlays, and the GLSL shaders. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that, and I will fast forward to the end. All right, now everything is downloaded and updated. And I don't know if you noticed uh, one of these, the, the GLSL shaders. I did it a couple times and it said the download failed. If you get anything like a download failed, just keep trying, eventually it will work. 
All right, so now that this is done, we can go ahead and backspace out, backspace out. Um, and uh, let's check now if your controller works. If your controller didn't work before, um, go ahead and quit RetroArch and open it up again. And hopefully, if your controller didn't work before, now hopefully it'll say your controller is configured in that port. And you can now move um, move around. If not, um, unfortunately, there's not much I can do to help you. You would have to go into settings, go into input, go into um, port one controls, and set all controls. Make sure you, your device is set. And once you do that, you can then manually put everything in. But I... That gets messy. There's so many options here. Uh, I'd rather you don't do that. Try to get a controller that does work. Again, I highly recommend the Xbox One S controller for just quickly getting started. And then eventually in a future video, I will show you how you can get a whole bunch of other c controllers working, like original controllers like NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Atari, etc. cetera, uh, in RetroArch. But that, that's I'm saving for a future video. One thing you will need to do, though, is if your controller is working, and even if it isn't, go ahead and enable us anyway. Go to Input, go down to Hotkeys, and go to Menu, Toggle, Controller, Combo, and set this to whatever you want. I personally like setting it to L3 and R3. What this does is once you are in-game, when you want to quit your game, you will press in, uh, in this case, the left stick and the right stick, otherwise known as L3 and R3, and it'll basically take you back to this menu. Uh, for those of you that don't have a working controller just yet, or if you'd rather not use a button combo, the F1 key on your keyboard will also bring you back to this menu. So uh, that is almost it. One other thing I would like for you to do is go down to users, go to username, and put in whatever username uh, you are generally going to be using. Um, this isn't really necessary right now, but just figure since we're here, let's get it out of the way. Um, and if you wanted to connect other things, you can connect your other accounts here. But again, something else I'm going to cover in a future video. All right, this is all done. Let's go down and quit RetroArch. So, we are almost done with RetroArch. We got all the cores installed. That's great. But now we need some BIOSes and other files in order to make sure that RetroArch will 100% work with anything that you throw at it. Uh, it's not necessary for everything, but again, I'm trying to do this for uh, your ease of use. So might as well just set it up. So I want you to go to a website called archive.org. While here, I want you to sign up for an account. I've already signed in, so it took me right here. Up on the left, there'll be a sign up button. Click that. You'll put in your username you want, your email address, and the password. Once you hit submit, it'll send you an email. You click on the link in the email to verify your account. It should bring you back here. Now, IAGL the uh, Internet Archive Game Launcher add-on needs to know your archive.org username and password. That is how it uh, it finds your the games you want to play. So be sure to remember what those are. Uh, we'll get back to that later. But while you're here and logged in, go to search and type in RetroArch BIOS Pack. And you're going to want the second one in the list here, the RetroArch BioPass Pack 2020-0103. And it says it was last updated in April of 2021. So go over to Download Options and click the Download button next to 7Z. This is going to download a .7-zip archive. For those of you that don't know what .7-zip is, or you don't think you had a program that is capable of unzipping .7-zip, open up a new browser tab, type in 7-zip, go to 7-zip.org, 
and download uh, whatever version of Windows you have. So for me, 64-bit, I would download this one up here. And once you install it, you should be able to extract .7-zip files. So we're just going to go ahead and wait for this file to download, and then we will be back. All right, so now that this system.7-zip file is downloaded, go ahead and open up your download folder. And what I want you to do is right-click it, go to 7-zip, and extract to system. Basically what this is doing is extracting everything in, that's inside of this zip folder into its own folder. Double-click and open it, and you have all these files in here. So what I want you to do now is go back to where you installed RetroArch and look for a system folder. Double click and open that and you'll notice it's blank. So now you can go ahead and highlight everything. Easy way is to click on anything in here and then hit Control A. It'll highlight all 158 items and drag and drop them into the system folder. All right, now that everything is in the system folder, we are now completely done with RetroArch. So we can now go here to our downloads folder and I can delete both of these system folders and files. So now that we have RetroArch installed and set up properly, the next thing we need to do is let's go back to IAGL. So type in IAGL in your Google search and go to the Internet Archive Game Launcher GitHub. It should be by Zach Morris. And scroll down. And again, as I said in the beginning here, definitely give this all a good read. Uh, but for this purposes here, it says download the repository zip file from here. Click this link here. It's going to download the zip file. You can see it's right here. You don't need to do anything with it. Keep it zipped. And now let's go and install Kodi. So do a Google search for Kodi. Kodi.tv is what you want. Click download. Click Windows. And download the installer for the version of Windows you have. I have the 64-bit, so I'm going to use 64-bit installer. Now go ahead and let this install. Now that the Kodi installer has downloaded, you can go and open up your downloads folder and double click on Kodi. Again, it's gonna tell you that this isn't a Microsoft verified app and that you didn't download it from the store. Go ahead and click install anyway. Again, you're gonna get the pop-up that you can't see but it says that uh, this is an unknown publisher. Do you want to install it? Click yes. And here is the Kodi installation wizard. So click next, read the agreement, click I agree, leave everything checked. This too is going to ensure you have um, Microsoft Visual C++ packages. Click next. And then your destination folder, uh, you can put it wherever you want. Me, uh, this should default to the C drive. So you should look like this, and that's perfectly fine to install it. However, since I don't have much space left on my C drive, I am installing everything into my D drive. So there we go. Go ahead and click next, click install, and let it install. All right, now that this is all done, don't click Run Kodi just yet. Let's go ahead and finish this. And we can now delete uh, the Kodi uh, installer from our downloads folder. Be sure not to accidentally delete this repository uh, zip. We still need that. And just like what we did for RetroArch, let's go ahead and find Kodi. And as I said, it would be in your, if you kept it default, it would be in your C drive my D drive, program files, Kodi, and then the Kodi.exe. So just like what we did with RetroArch, right click and hold, drag it to your desktop, let go, hit create shortcut here, and there you go. 
So now go ahead and double click on the Kodi.exe shortcut. Now I have uh, multiple monitors, so it is showing up on my on my other monitor right now, and I will show you how you can fix that if you have a similar problem. So there we go. I just change it to the other monitor. So what you should get when you first load this up is you should come, come to this page here. If you need to move around what monitor this is displaying on, uh, you're going to use your up, down, left, right keys and uh, enter to go into a menu and backspace to go back out. And here you're going to hit enter on settings. You're going to go to system. You're going to go down to uh, display, go to monitor, and then just hit enter until it uh, selects the monitor that you want. So now that we're here, we're going to go to settings going to go to add-ons, go to install from zip file, go to settings, and turn on unknown sources. This is going to allow you to install add-ons that don't come officially from Kodi. Go ahead and agree to this warning by clicking yes, hit backspace, and go back to install from zip file. Click yes, now browse to where your download folder is. It is typically on your C drive, users, your username, and downloads. And there it is, the repository .zach Morris. So hit enter. In the top right corner, you can see that it said it installed. Now you can go install from repository. Go to the Zach Morris add-on repository. Go ahead and go to game add-ons. Game Providers, Internet Archive Game Launcher, and click on the Install button. Now, this is going to tell you that in order for IAGL to work, it needs to also have these other add-ons installed. So go ahead and click OK to that, and then wait for it to download. All right, and you'll know it's installed when you see in the top right corner, it says that the add-on has been installed. The next thing that's going to pop up is this YouTube wizard. You do not want to execute that, so go ahead and hit no. And now you can hit backspace to go back, backspace to go back, backspace to go back, backspace, backspace, backspace. And now we are back at the home menu. So now you can use your arrow keys, go down to add-on. Hit right to go to IAGL and hit enter. First time it loads up, it's going to show the terms of use. I would highly recommend that you read through all of it. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait for it to scroll on its own in order to, like it is right now, and uh, read through all of this here. Uh, once you are done reading all of that, you can go ahead and select agree. And now it's asking, would you like to set up the execute the setup wizard? Click yes. Click OK. Some game lists require an archive.org account. Do you want to enter your account info? Click yes. And put in all the information that you had created when you created your archive.org account before. So my email address, enter my password, enter. Now it says to select the launcher. Do you want to play it in Kodi via the Kodi Retro Player, or do you want the external launch command? Uh, I personally don't have any experience with the Kodi Retro Player. I always use RetroArch. So if we're going to go, and since that's what we set up in this video, we're going to go ahead and use the external launch command. Hit enter. Now it wants to know what type of system you are on. We are on Windows. Enter. Now it wants to know where our RetroArch.exe uh, file is. So for you guys, if you left it in the default location, it would probably be in the C drive. 
For me, it's on my D drive. So D drive, RetroArch-Win64, and scroll down until you find RetroArch.exe. There you go, RetroArch.exe. Press Enter. Now it wants to know where your RetroArch configuration file is. Again, browse to your RetroArch directory and download, scroll down until you see RetroArch.cfg. Right here, RetroArch.cfg, enter. Do you want to enable Netplay features? Yes, you do. And now it wants you to put in your username. So I recommend putting in the same username that you put in when uh, you set up a username in RetroArch. Do you want IAGL to pick default emulators for each game list? Yes, you do. Enter. And with that little bit of fanfare, the setup wizard is complete. Hit enter. And now it's going to ask if you would like to pre-cache all the game list. Hit yes to that. It's going to take a few minutes for it to go through and pre-cache them all, but it'll definitely save you time in the long run. By doing it now, you won't have to do it later when you browse your games. But while you're waiting, take a look at all the names for the different game lists so you get an idea of all the different systems that you will now be able to play. Okay, so it has already pre-cached everything, and now you are set. Uh, by my timestamp here, this took me in total 49 minutes to get us to, to this point here. So your mileage may vary. Uh, my internet is being a bit slow today, so your downloading may be a little bit faster. Um, at, or this could be taking you a little bit longer to set up uh, due to you just not knowing what you're doing. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and search some of these lists. Go ahead and go to Browse All Lists, and let's go to the system that you want to play. So for this one, let's do Atari 2600. You can browse one big list, which will just list every single game, or you can list it alphabetically. I'm going to list alphabetically. And I'm going to look for one of my favorite childhood games, Pitfall. So go ahead, hit enter on that. It's going to take you to this screen here where you're going to get to see a little bit of uh, information on it, a description, you get to see some nice little uh, pictures. So go ahead and hit launch. Make sure your controller is turned on and let's game. And everything is working just fine. So uh, to leave this game and go back to the menu, uh, use your button hotkey, which for me was L3 and R3. So that brings me here. I can go ahead and uh, go to close content. And then I can go down to quit RetroArch. And now it takes me back to Cody. So let's try a different game. So I'm going to go ahead and hit backspace, backspace, backspace. And let's scroll down some more. Um, if you want to play arcade games, Final Burn, Neo, and MAME are your two lists that you want to check there. So let's go to Final Burn, Neo, and let's play one of my favorite arcade games, The Simpsons Arcade Game. Now, the weird thing with these lists, if the title has the word THE in front of it, more than likely it's going to be in the T column or a T folder. So it's kind of silly. You would think the Simpsons would be an S, but you got it because it's the Simpsons. You got to go to T and then scroll down 
And here you go. So the Simpsons. One thing to note, your controller for RetroArch is plugged in, is virtually quote unquote plugged into port one. So if you choose any of these four player arcade cabinets, uh, where player, if you wanted to be, you know, Marge, I think it is, you have to be on player, the very first set of controls. You want to be Lisa, you'd be on the third set, second set. You want to be Bart, you'd be on the third set and Homer, the fourth set of controls. So if I were to play this right now, using the four players um of the four player arcade version i will not be able to change uh my character so and that works for any arcade system that's like that so i'm going to go and make sure i use the two player arcade and these are just the different versions of the arcade uh, i'll go ahead and pick set three because i think this would be the newest version hit enter again i'm going to go to launch enter now it's booting up RetroArch and there you go now you're just going to have to figure out what the controls are uh, like I said they're all mapped to an Xbox controller and they should all be fairly easy to figure out here, you're going to want to hit the select button, um, and, and so hitting the select button, or the button I would consider select on an Xbox controller, that's what adds your coins. All right, and here we are. So again, um, as I said, these controls are all pretty much mapped to uh, an Xbox controller. If you're not sure what the inputs are, you can always go to controls, hit A, go to port one controls, and it's going to tell you what each one does. So up, down, left, right. So the B button on your Xbox controller is button two in the arcade. Your A button is button one. The view button, which is the on the Xbox controller, it looks like two little boxes. I would consider that where the select button would be. That's to do the coin. Start the menu button, which I would consider the start button, is start. And then your analog stick. And that's pretty much it. So you can back out of this, back out of that. And there's all kinds of other settings that you can uh, adjust here. I would recommend you don't mess with any of them. Go ahead, quit RetroArch. Back, back, back. Another thing I want to show you is these Internet Archive best of uh, lists. Basically, rather than going through these huge lists that have tons and hundreds and thousands of games on them, uh, someone has gone through the trouble. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it was Zach Morris, the creator of IAGL. I'm not 100 percent sure, but someone had gone through and made a best of list. So if I want to want um, the best of, let's see, uh, Game Boy Classic. I can go ahead and click enter on this. And here you will want to do one big list. Don't do alphabetical or whatever. Make sure you do one big list. And it'll list in uh, order from one all the way down to 50, I believe. Yep, 50. What is they consider the top uh, 50 games for that system. So I like Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. So let's give that a try. Hit enter. Go to launch. And here we go. Uh, again, if you're not sure of the controls, you can press in your uh, menu uh, toggle hotkey. Go all the way down to 
controls, port one controls, and you can see that up, down, left, right. The B button on the um, Xbox controller is the A button on the um, on the Game Boy, and the A button on the Xbox controller is the B button. Because if you remember, Nintendo's alphabet is backwards. B comes before A, and on an Xbox controller, A comes before B. So you got your Y and X buttons, that's your turbo buttons. Uh, select and start, although uh, I don't believe a, no, Game Boy did have a select button. Um, and then if you want to, looks like they have a uh, fast forward selected as the right trigger. And that's pretty much it there. So let's go back to resume. We'll go ahead and start this game. Oh. And there you have it. So again, if you don't like those controls, like me personally, I think I would want, um, on my Xbox controller, I think I would want X to be B and A to be A. It just, to me, it feels more comfortable. Uh, you can go ahead and change that. But I would try and just not mess with anything. There's so many settings in RetroArch that you could potentially mess something up if you don't know what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of other little uh, tricks and tips for me to talk about in here. Uh, one of which, which I'm not going to go over right now, but it's this whole net play thing, how you can start up a game in net play and easily play with other people online. But this video is already nearing um, an hour for me. I'm sure I'm going to edit it down and it's going to be a lot shorter than that. But um, so stay tuned to my channel and I will be showing you some more tips and tricks on how to play some more of your favorite retro games online. Um, be sure to check out the links in the description. One of the links is going to be for the IAGL discord. Uh, I will be in there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and tag me and I will do my best to help you. So thanks again for watching. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this and you find it useful. Bye.